this is an example of this movie Anonymous that we did with Roland Emmerich. We basically broke a lot of ground. Um, we used fusion to generate volumetric light, volumetric fog, atmosphere. All of that water is generated in fusion. Um, all the smoke, fire, atmosphere, chimneys, um, all of the tight lighting inside was all done with uh, volume shading. So in, in between the buildings and all that kind of stuff, it was too expensive to render that in super quality. So we would use these um, 3D mats and essentially go in um, into that volume space. So it is a node-based system. And you, know, you have your typical environments where you have your nodes and your timelines and your spline editors and all that kind of stuff. But I'm going to just touch base real quickly with the preference because I want you guys to see how important this is. Frame format, right? So Fusion has all frame formats that you can imagine. You can make your own custom one or anything. But it's not important. You can, I can leave this at, you know, whatever. Save it. Doesn't matter. It's not resolution. It's independent. And what that means is, and I'll bring in an HDR image since we are talking HDR. And so, for instance, if I have uh, an image like this, and let me go and source that. Okay, so here we have a, a high dynamic range image. Fusion automatically, by the extension, knows that it's HDR. But uh, more importantly, Fusion doesn't really care what resolution it is or what it is. It'll support unlimited color, depth, uh, you name it. So if we, we look at that and we see it's 3D cube, you know, we could see that we've got a lot of data you know, that's outside of there. We can visualize that in a normalized environment. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop a scale node. And I'm going to view, um, I had a blur. I'm going to view the blur, OK? And this is really, really important, guys. Fusion is completely resolution independent. So that means that when I apply this blur, and let's just say I blur it this much, and then I take this scale tool, and I change its resolution, you'll notice that on the right-hand side, as long as we have it set to fit, the results are exactly the same visually. Right? Fusion just doesn't care. Everything is based on real estate of screen space for calculations of amounts. That also means that if I take a transformation and I position it somewhere, and I do the same thing, and we switch resolutions, and now all of a sudden, I don't even know what resolution or scaling we're at, it doesn't matter. Right? So now you work in 8K, 4K, 1K, half K, 20K, really doesn't matter. Uh, so with people shooting eight channels or eight cameras of VR and 8K stereo, do your effects in 1K. We are able to, by the way, render UVs. So we can extract data from a wrapped sphere and apply it back to the unwrapped image so that you can um, get some really cool stuff. So yeah, resolution, color, uh, again, really irrelevant in Fusion. So here, I just want to show you guys real quickly. I mean, Fusion for editors, for instance, is a very, very powerful uh, platform. So take a look at just some real quickly uh, the kind of things that you could do and the speed at which you could do it at. Right. So we have uh, a little effect, you know, whatever it is. But look how fast I can start um, going into my modifier for my text and just uh, typing UIP as it goes. Right? It's extremely, extremely fast in its design. And that's not limited to uh, you know, text in 2D or whatever, even 3D text. So for instance, uh, this little jiggle text I made, which I'll show you here. So right here, this thing. Okay, this is actually a full 3D environment. And I'm going to show you in a second. I'm really used to working with a tablet. Many of you might be noticing that. Take a look at that. That is true, true 3D environment, right? It's all right there. And you can do exactly the same thing. I can go into my text and I can type uh, something new, right? Extremely fast. The engine on Fusion is, is extremely, extremely fast. Um, it's also obviously a, a compositing system. Uh, so it, you saw with Anonymous, it does a ton of that stuff. 
it's traditional compositing without, you know, without even thinking about it. But it is also a very powerful particle system, right? Things like steam or smoke or things that editorials always looking for but never seem to have the uh, the angle they need. Um, so I'll give you a really good example here. So this is actually rendering, and I'm gonna go in here, actually show you what this is. This is actually a full 3D environment. So if I want to, uh, and you see how fast this is, you can video this or record it from any angle, any position, uh, you know, increase the turbulence, anything. These are just presets that we made, right? And it's just a matter of finding the camera and, and making changes. It's a very, very, very powerful, well-rounded uh, application. So we have this entire environment here, and look how this looks when we play it back, or I should say, render it. And here we are in OpenGL. Right, so right now on this laptop, I'm getting 14 frames per second in HD. Right, that's the scene, that's the render. We have particles that can go in front and behind uh, we have parallax effects. So now I move my camera and I just do a slight animation and I move my camera forward. Everything in the scene becomes the correct parallax effect that you would expect. Clouds floating in the air, leaves behind you, and all that kind of stuff. So it's an extremely powerful, uh, extremely powerful engine. Thank you so much, Ronnie.